Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on the American Resistance Takedown AR-15 pistol, both in 5.56 and 300 blackout. And here it is. You don't believe me? Well, I'm going to have to show you. But first, I want to thank the person that made this video possible, and that is Ken. He's a local subscriber who had this gun. I borrowed a couple of his other guns in the past and reviewed those. And this is something really cool, and he knew it would be right up the Texas Gun Vault's alley. I also want to thank my Patreons, as always, for their monthly support. I am honored and humbled that you think my content is worthy of that support. And if you want to become a Patreon, there is a link in the description below. As you guys know, YouTube is all always demonetizing us firearms YouTube channels. So all that support really goes a long way in keeping the lights on around here. And as always, I want to thank my sponsor for every single range report, Brownworks. Brownworks is a company that makes a lot of high quality custom one-off grips for a wide variety of different firearms and many different finishes and profiles. I've talked about them many times in the past. I know I've shown you all the great work that he has done, but I know if you're watching this video, you might not have a 1911 that you want wood grips for, but you like modern sporting rifles and modern sporting pistols. Well, Brownworks has something for you too. I've shown this before. He can do laser engraving of Magpul PMAGs, both for the AR-15 and the AK-47. So if you have some type of custom logo or something that you really want on a PMAG, he can do it for you. So besides making some of the best grips in the world, he now can laser engrave and customize modern sporting rifle magazines. So go check out his website. I'm going to put a link in the description below and pin a comment. There's also a discount code down there that you can use to get 10% off of your first purchase. And if there's something on the website that you don't see, email Mark. I guarantee you that he will hook you up. And as always, tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. Now, I know you are saying there is no way this is the gun that I was describing, the American Resistance Takedown AR-15 pistol in both 5.56 and 300 Blackout. Well, I got to show you this. And when Ken showed me this, I was absolutely blown away. This is one of the coolest concepts I have ever seen. So let me get everything out of the bag here. And we'll put this together and I'll show you what the entire package has to offer. So here we have the receiver. So it's a standard AR-15 receiver that uses the law folding tactical brace. And I guess it has the SB tactical A3 brace on it as well. So that folds out and obviously you saw it was an extremely small package. But now let's put this barrel section on it. And it uses the Cry Havoc system, one of the more popular takedown systems for the AR-15. Now when putting this together, and I'll talk about this in just a moment, it can be a little bit tricky, but for the most part it goes together pretty easy. And there you go. Now we have a 300 blackout pistol that was just folded up just a second ago and required a very small amount of space for storage. I even have a barrel for 5.56 as well that I can easily change out with the Cry Havoc system. And in the whole package we had two magazines. Both of these are PMAGs. One of them is designed for 5.56. The other one 300 blackout, but you can use either cartridge and either, but the Magpul 300 blackout is designed with a little bit different tolerances for the 300 blackout cartridge, which I actually like. I own a few of those and they seem to work really well. So now you know what this gun is. Isn't that really cool? Now, I have been looking at this, and one of the things I'm going to talk about is that there aren't really many proprietary parts on this gun. Pretty much everything on this firearm can be bought separately, but it was assembled by American Resistance. Now, the lower receiver is marked American Resistance from Garrison, Texas, and the model on the receiver is the Liberty. What a lot of people don't know is AR-15 is actually a trademark from the Colt Firearms Company. So only an AR-15 can be made by Colt. Everything else is an AR-15 style of gun. So we say this is an AR-15 pistol. It's really the Model Liberty by 
American resistance. So that's what this gun is. Pretty cool, pretty neat concept, but all the parts, as I said, can be found online and you can actually build this thing out. And I'm gonna talk about that and maybe that might be a way I would wanna go because there's a few other parts that I would either wanna change out or add to this. So now let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this rifle. First and foremost, it's an AR-15 and it's such a modular gun that pretty much everything I like about an AR-15 platform, I'm gonna like about this. You know, you got the rails, just the way the gun operates, the manual of arms, the ergonomics, that's pretty much standard. I love, first and foremost, the concept of this a folding gun. So you have a folding stock with a takedown barrel. Now, I know the US Air Force has actually built a survival rifle for their pilots. That's kind of the same. I forgot what exact parts they use on that. I know there's a couple from Midwest Industries and it has a little bit different takedown system, but it's the same concept. So this gun is designed maybe for hiking, backpacking, and survival, but you get a rifle chambered in an intermediate cartridge in such a small package that obviously can fit in this backpack. The other thing I love about this is the complete kit. I love the presentation of this. This is the American Resistance bag that comes with it, has some writing here on it, you get a little tag, and it's designed for this particular gun. You have two compartments, you have spaces for extra barrels and magazines. It's a really, really nice package. And of course, because it's designed for survival, I think it's just the perfect thing to add to buying the gun. It's just a great presentation, absolutely absolutely love that about this package. So there's only a few things about this gun that I don't like, and it has to do more with the way the gun assembles than anything else. It's not that the parts are bad or I don't like it in concept, it's just a few extra steps you have to take, and if you're not careful, can kind of slow you down. So although this is a takedown AR-15, it truly isn't a quick assemble AR-15. Let's talk about this whole barrel assembly first from Cry Havoc. Now this is is pretty much a standardized takedown system for the AR. It's extremely popular and you're going to pay a lot of money for it, but it's very, very sturdy. Personally, I find this system a little bit hard to use because it has these levers on both sides of the barrel. So pretty much you think, okay, I've taken those off. I'm going to remove the barrel assembly, which by the way, you also have to pull down on the charging handle a little bit because you've got to get the bolt to unlock from the barrel extension. So you think you're going to take it off, right? Well, you're actually not because this is a very easy way of doing it. You think, okay, I have the rifle down. I'm just going to lift it off. But these levers constantly get caught behind what they're supposed to latch around. It's much easier to get the barrel on and off holding it to the side and this is not as easy as you think as you can see I'm just kind of messing around with these levers here and then finally once the bolt is unlocked up oh, see and now the lever got caught again there we go up oh, the other side got caught this is just the problem with this so I guess I can turn the gun upside down there we go and there we go I got the barrel off it's just a little bit complex in that way, or it's just a little bit difficult to manipulate everything to get the gun apart. Not a big fan of that. I know that there's other systems that kind of screw on, um, but I'm not familiar with those because I've never used one of these in any builds that I have ever done. The other thing that I don't like is the Law Tactical Takedown. Because it has a folding feature on the back, there's an extra part here that has to go into the bolt carrier. And getting that out is just a little bit weird. So this is not an easy gun to disassemble. So until this part comes out, if you have a problem in the field and you want to field strip the gun and take the upper off of the lower, you can't. So there's just a bunch of extra steps you have to go through to get this gun apart so you can just do basic maintenance and basic field stripping. So as long as the gun is operating like it should, you won't have any problems whatsoever. But if you need to take it apart for any reason, you might have some issues. So let me see if I can put this back together now. It's much easier to put together than it is to take apart. There we go. So those are my real big complaints. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the trigger. 
The trigger on an AR-15, I think, is really important and something that is really easy to upgrade, take out, and enhance. Now, you're going to be paying a lot of money for this rifle, which, by the way, I think is more assembled than built. As I said, everything on this pretty much is made by another company. You have Magpul and SB Tactical and Cry Havoc and Law Tactical. I'm not sure who makes the barrels, who makes the uppers, but they're not marked as American Resistance, only the lower is. So everything else on this gun you can buy in the aftermarket. It's just assembled. Now, does that mean it's not assembled well or made from the best parts? Absolutely not. This thing seems to be fantastic, but I think for the price you're paying, which as of me filming this, these are going for around $2,000, I would kind of like to have something better than a mil-spec trigger. But that's something that I can change out myself, and I understand why the mil-spec trigger is in there. I just kind of feel like having that upgrade would be something really nice, especially when the cost is so high and you're getting such a nice presentation and kit to go with it. All right, so that's what I like and don't like, but today I'm gonna to add one more category, and that would be something I would like to see on the pistol, and that would actually be the Fab Defense Folding Pistol Grip. The US Air Force uses that on their survival AR-15, and essentially there's a little button on it, and it folds backwards for storage. Since you have a folding brace, you have a takedown barrel, having that grip to fold back to would be really really cool and that's something that i would do personally if i own this so i would have three ways of collapsing this into the absolute smallest package i possibly could get all right so i've talked a lot let's get this thing to the range and actually see how it shoots we're going to start off with 556 five, which i think most people if you're going to buy this gun you're probably going to buy it in 556 five, it's the more popular caliber this is a 10 and a half inch barrel so i'm sure it's going to be pretty loud i want to see how it's going to function with all this complexity to it you know when there's more moving parts it's more likely something's not going to work or it's going to break but all these parts are high quality i know from building ars myself a lot of people talk about them so i'm anxious to see how this thing shoots to see if it's accurate if this takedown system holds zero well let's get to the range i'm going to set up the target at 10 yards put a magazine through this and i'm going to aim for the center target so let's see how it does All right, it works like designed. I had absolutely no problems with it, and obviously it is very accurate. So I'm ready to take this thing out to a further distance. There was something that I did notice when shooting, and that is I had some big fireballs coming out of the ejection port. So I think this gun might be a little bit over gassed. When it comes to the exit ports for the gas, it seems like there might be some powder that is not completely burning. I'm seeing both sparks and a little bit of a fireball. Nothing else is concerning me, which is something that is typical here on such a short barrel. The gas tuning on these guns can be really, really tough. And I did notice from just looking at this, this is using a carbine link system. I think this is actually the, the 300 blackout barrel. This the 556 five, yes it's using a carbine length system those can be a little bit hard to tune when it comes to an ar-15 pistol so it might be a little bit overboard which you would want for reliability but then you're going to get this problem and i noticed a big flash when i was shooting i don't think the camera caught it that much but pay attention to it in all the future shooting portions of this range report and you might catch a couple more i also think it's over gas because it is expelling these cartridges forward and very far. I'm not used to AR-15s ejecting to about the two o'clock position, but it's a very, very, very strong ejection. It's just in a location that I'm not used to. All right, so let's take this thing out to a further distance. Now I know it's accurate. Now I know it's zeroed. Let's shoot this thing at 25 yards. I'm gonna go for the top two targets. I'm gonna kind of alternate between the two and see if this thing can still hold zero at further distances.
All right, so once again, this gun is very accurate, has very low recoil, and is functioning great. I just think it's a little bit overgassed. I'm gonna try to capture some of these flashes on camera. So I'm gonna set the camera out on a tripod. It's a little bit darker further down range. I'm gonna face the camera and shoot by it and see if I can catch anything. And I'm gonna shoot kind of fast. I'm kind of curious, because this mil-spec trigger now is actually feeling pretty darn good. It's definitely not a Geisley, but I think I can shoot it fast. So let's see how I do. All right, so I wasn't able to get many flashes on that take. However, you can definitely see the cartridge is getting ejected to the one or the two o'clock position. I definitely think this gun is overgassed, and I think adding one of those adjustable gas bolt carrier groups would actually be a really nice upgrade to this. I think it would work really well in that, just to kind of tune that gas system down just a little bit. All right, well, I wanna give my wife a chance to shoot this. As always, she loves to shoot every gun that comes through the Texas Gun Vault, and this is no exception, and she loves AR-15. So I just wanna put it in her hands, have her shoot it, and see what she thinks. All right, so she had no issue. She goes, hey, I like it. But she didn't really geek out on it as much as I do. I really think it is such a cool concept. For her, it's just another AR-15. For me, it's like, wow, that is definitely something different and I like it. Shot well for her, she shot it accurate, had no problems whatsoever. She liked how small it was as well. You know, she's a lot shorter than I am and I think it fit her body type a lot better. She just likes the smaller rifles. That's why she loves shooting my short barrel rifles so much. She just likes them to be a little bit more compact. Plus, she's cross-eyed dominant, and when she holds these things, she has to kind of hold them at an angle so she can use her left eye with the optic. But she had no problem doing any of that. It was a comfortable gun for her to shoot. I also hope that you saw that I zoomed in on the ejection port a little bit and caught some of the sparks. I don't think it's sparks because metal on metal is rubbing. It's just some of that unburnt powder that's coming out and it's burning as it leaves the ejection port. I'm not a big fan of that. I've said that a couple of times. I just kind of wanted to document that and maybe some people in the comments section can help me diagnose exactly what that is and know if it really is a bigger problem. My gut says no there's just too much gas coming through this gas system. So now I wanna see how it's gonna run in 300 blackout. So now I'm gonna change the barrel assembly. So I'll take that magazine out, and once again, pull those levers down. Gotta hold it to the side here, or upside down, get those levers off, pull the bolt carrier back just a little bit to unlock it, and then it should come off. And there we go again, those levers caught. All right, there we go. See, it's just a little bit more complex than what I would want. And then we're gonna put on the other upper. It's just not as intuitive as I would want it to be. But there we go. All right, so we've now changed the barrel assembly, and now we're gonna shoot this thing in 300 blackout. I'm very curious to see if this Cry Havoc system can hold zero because the optic is mounted on the upper and the barrel assembly is a completely separate part. So does it made up right? Is it gonna hold that zero? Well, let's find out and also see how this gun handles 300 blackout. I'm hoping it's gonna run a little bit better simply because 300 blackout is designed for shorter barrels. 300 blackout.
right, well, I am super impressed. It definitely held zero. The gun ran great. It runs better in 300 blackout than 5.56. As I said, the cartridge is designed for these shorter barrels. The gas system is shorter. It's just better tuned. So personally, if I was gonna purchase one of these or build one of these, I'd probably go with 300 blackout. It's just the better cartridge for a gun of this type. You can definitely go with 5.56 if that's what you want. It's gonna be a louder concussion and you're still gonna have unspent powder because of all the issues that come with such a short barrel. But with 300 blackout and a pistol, you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever. So what are my final thoughts on the American Resistance Takedown AR-15 pistol? Well, this gun is hands down one of the coolest concepts I have ever reviewed in a firearm. I love this. I even like the fact it's a pistol and not an SBR. You guys know I love SBRs, but the fact that this gun is a pistol allows you to use the opening in the brace to actually put that barrel assembly when it's folded in the bag. So it helps with storage. So if I owned one of these, I would definitely keep it a pistol and use this SB Tactical A3 brace. So this is just one awesome concept. And I can tell you the people at American Resistance do a great job assembling it. I have no problems with its build, its fit, its finish. But I also have to say this gun appears to be just assembled. Now I'm not taking anything away from American Resistance. However, I think if I was going to have a gun like this, I would prefer to build it. Now I know a lot of people out there either don't know how to build ARs or have no interest. They just want to buy it and take it to the range. And if that's the case, I think this gun is worth every bit that they're asking for. Because obviously we have very high quality parts on this, but you're also paying for an expert's time. And that's extremely valuable as well. This gun shoots great. It's a wonderful concept. I love the package. So if you don't want to build an AR, I think it's worth it. And this gun is five out of five stars for the cool factor. Hands down, it's awesome. A lot of people are gonna like it. Now, I'm gonna give it another star rating, which is if I personally wanted one, I would probably build it. And as I said, if I built it, I would go in a different direction. I would have a different grip. I'd probably have a different bolt carrier in there. I would have a different trigger in there. And I would have to just deal with the systems like the law folding tactical. I said, I don't like the takedown of it. And I don't like how the levers on this cry havoc barrel system work. So I have to deduct a few points. So if I built this gun, I would still like it. I would only give it four and a half stars, but I would save a lot of money. I think you can build this gun a lot cheaper than you can buy it. But as I said, if you don't care about building or don't have the knowledge or the desire to do so, I think it's worth every bit because you're paying for someone's time and their expertise. But I would love to build this gun. That would be really cool. One of the projects I've always wanted to do is to clone out that new Air Force survival rifle, and who knows, maybe I'll do that. And it uses a few different systems than this one does, and that might be a direction that I go. But making an AR-15 takedown rifle is something I am definitely interested in. But the thing I do like, as compared to the stock, as I mentioned, is the fact with the brace, because you can put that barrel assembly through it. I like that. So if I ever made one of these survival AR-15s, I would definitely go in that direction, and that's an option that I absolutely love. So there you go. That is my thoughts and opinions on the American Resistance Takedown AR-15 in both 5.56, 300 blackout. If you are buying it, I believe it is worth it, and it's five out of five stars. If I was building it, I would only give myself four and a half stars out of five, just because it doesn't have all the options that I want, and I don't like how some of the mechanisms work on the takedown. So I'm not sure if that makes sense to anybody, kind of going at it from two different approaches, but this gun is more assembled when you buy it than it is built. There doesn't really seem to be anything on this gun that is proprietary. It really does seem like this company bought the parts from other sources and just assembled it. They designed the concept. They said, I want to use this, 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 and this, and have these options, and they just build it from other parts. Maybe the only thing that they're making in-house is the lowers. As I said, it's marked that way, but maybe they're having somebody else make those for them. I can tell you that some of the small parts I think are just CMMG. It's what they look like. The trigger is not marked. 
but the takedown pins definitely look like CMMG, but I could be completely wrong on that, okay? Uh, but it looks like it's just common small parts, so everything on this gun is made by other people and they just assemble it, but they assemble it really well. So what do you guys think? Is this a cool concept? Do you like it? Do you want one? Or are you like me? And would you want to build one? I'd like to know that in the comments section below as well. So, tell me what you think. So, as always, thanks for watching.